Howdy, y'all. Welcome to the Ears Podcast, produced by Terrier TV. I am Frank, that is Bill, and that is Cindy. We are your hosts of the Ears Podcast, produced here at Terrier, at Terrier TV at Titusville right. High School. Titusville High School. I Terrier said that TV. three times, but Why for some you reason, sound like that? I felt like it was appropriate. <laughs> you know, eventually, one of these days, you're going to like write it out. I have before. And I know. It's actually worse when I write it out. <laughs> okay. Well, it, I mean, technically really, speaking. Really, it does? Yeah, I, I, I like to... To read some, like you know, when I was doing the announcing for the football games and stuff like that, I didn't like doing stuff off the cuff. I wanted to read it. If you had an announcement for me, I want to read it. Write it out what you want me to say, and I will say it, and I will do it with inflection. But true, yeah. Don't just tell me, oh yeah, we're having a car wash Wednesday. Go. Well, there's so many <laughs> notes up there in the first place that yes, I always tell people to like write it down, but I'll remember that it's there and just kind right. of wing yeah. it off of that. I. I remember you talking to me about this early in our podcast adventure and you were talking about uh, David Letterman and whenever he first started doing interviews, how he wrote down all of his questions and would talk to the people, ask, you know, ask them questions and then from the script he had and he felt as if he was missing some of the, con- some of the conversation because he was having to go back to his notes each time. Right, because you don't follow it, the flow of it, because there right. there's always a flow. There, tr- there truly is. And it was maybe six or seven episodes in, I went, no, okay, I'll know my guest, and I will, I'll, I'll ask questions and kind of let them flow as the conversation goes on. Right. And going back and listening to them all, because I, each time I post an episode, I, I watch it after, you? after I post it, because I, I like to try to critique you, myself and make I it better each time. I never do. Really? I watch every single time. I never look at them. I, I watch never watch them. Watch no. them never. Really? I mean, I watched the one with my mother. Oh, he okay. did one with my mother. I watched that Which one. Which was a great one. And I show that one to family. I go visit my cousins, and it's like, hey, you want to see your aunt? <laughs> and uh, and uh, we do that. But no, I don't ever watch them. Okay. Don't ever watch them. I do because I feel like it's a good way to critique. Oh, sure. It gives me ideas for maybe pre, uh, following episodes, questions to ask that I could have asked but maybe didn't. Right. And I think it, it, help, it helps me. When it comes to asking, asking questions and sure. kind of making the thing flow a little and, bit better. And I don't think that you should write out the questions. What I think you should oh, write yeah. out, though, is the, <laughs> the introduction and the conclusion. Because I think if you points, do those, though. I think if you do those off the cuff, you miss stuff. I do. And, Especially um, at the ending. I do see, a lot. And I started, when I first started doing do Terrier lot. TV with students, I always thought I would write the script for the show, you know, the announcements. The script is written. You can do your own opening personalize it you do your own opening do your own closing and something as simple as that just saying hello or welcome or whatever and then saying that you know that's it well you do your bye-bye and that's that's what i wanted them to do come up with something that was theirs could not do it i had to write it (laughs) i had to write it for them and then you write it and now the stuff that's written they will not deviate from it I tell them, you know, you can always, the introduction, the beginning, and the conclusion, if you want to personalize it, if you want to, as long as it's school appropriate, you can do that. Go ahead. Go for it. Which is great. And they never Absolutely not. do. <laughs> never. Uh, Are they just very uh, rarely. Just nervous about it, you think? Sometimes. I mean, I've had some that have done it, hmm. and they get a little grief, because, uh, you know, because again, it's different. <clears throat> and, you know, we always end the show with, that's it from here. Have a great day, Terriers. And if you do something different than that, people look up. They're like, what? What happened? What happened? And so then, you know, and people don't like different. They don't <laughs> well, like different. Uh, they, well, I, I kind of they a notice walking different. version of different. <laughs> <laughs> although, although you always end, and I'm very grateful for this, you always end with the bye-bye, because that's when I know I'm going <laughs> yeah, to press I, the well, button. I wouldn't do that to you. And I, I, I think about that, because I know you're waiting on it. Yeah. And I would never not do that to you i know sometimes i appreciate it i jump into the introductions too quick uh-huh. and we've talked about this sometimes i do i just and i do it jokingly sometimes just to right. see what will happen i would never do that to you on an ending <laughs> I, I, I would it. never i do appreciate it because yeah i wait for that because that is the cue to go i say sometimes i make the ending like super super long just oh, he does he meanders oh i do he yeah. meanders. it goes it's all over the place sometimes i just i get kind of chuckling in my own head and i just just keep throwing things out there just to see what will happen yep that's yeah, and then sometimes you say one thing and then say bye-bye <laughs> it's true it is true yeah you never know uh, 
That's always an interesting conversation. So who's this lady sitting over here? Well, yeah, I was going to get... <laughs> Speaking in, oh, of meandering. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll introduce Haley, Haley Preble. Thank you very much for hey. being here. Um, Thanks for having me. <laughs> what I wanted to ask you guys about real quick is what's happened in the last week since I've seen you guys. I didn't see you all last week. Oh, that's right. You were off on an adventure. I was off on an adventure. Are you allowed to tell us about said adventure? Um, hmm. <laughs> From the, the look on his face, no. Did you find it? <laughs> um, yes and Did and you find no. evidence of it and not find it? Yeah, yes. Hmm. Yes. Okay. So you're fairly certain that it's there, but you don't know. Oh, I, no, no, it's not there anymore. Oh, it's not there anymore. Okay. Mm. No. I thought somebody had seen it. Uh, oh, yeah. kind of Loch Nessie there. Yeah, I don't know. All I managed to do was take a couple of like really bad tick bites. Oh, and no. I started feeling bad yesterday afternoon and I had to start on this like two days of high dose of doxycycline, okay. which I'm highly allergic to. So it was oh, super geez. exciting. Oh. My doctor's like, well, yeah, you, should need to, you need to take some doxycycline. Uh, well, you're allergic to it. Let's see what the backup for it is. He's like, well, I've never seen that before. There is no backup for it. So you just got to oh. suck it up and deal with it. What? And so oh. last night and yesterday morning were a pretty rough time, but um, I felt like I was, I don't know, felt like I was going to explode. It was pretty, pretty crazy, but oh, wow. feeling pretty, feeling a little bit more human this afternoon, hence why I'm here. So okay, we haven't missed a Wednesday. I don't think ever in the podcast time, I wasn't going to be the person that like killed over and right. didn't make it work. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'm like, I'll just suck it up, suck it up, Frank, and deal with it. When your doctor says that and kind of laughs, you're like, okay. Okay. I'll suck it up and deal with it. We'll do it. <laughs> All right. All right. So, yeah, anyhow, yeah, I wish I had more so, positive things to say. Cindy, you got anything to say before we completely shut you out? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got, I got nothing. Before we completely shut you I bring nothing to the table. That is oh so God. not true. <laughs> you know, you, we've You're talked right. about this so what's many the, times. What's the term? Self-deprecating. That's it. <laughs> Correct. Yes. So they, they like to break out big words when they can break out big <laughs> words just to, just to watch course. my mind kind of melt. And then I got to start stroking my beard and everything goes sideways from there. <laughs> there right. you go. All right. You guys ready to jump into the podcast? Yeah, sure. I'm ready. All right. Cindy's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> so today on the Ears podcast, we are joined by Haley Preble. Haley, I've, uh, we were talking about this beforehand. I dare to say, I, I tell everybody you're my niece because in my mind you are. Basically. And I've known you and your sister since you guys were like three or four years old. It's so weird. Yeah, That's like so for, forever. Yeah. I wasn't conscious then, but I think I remember knowing you at like eight, maybe maybe earlier. Yeah, it, yeah, this is true. It's, it's been a long time, it's been a long time. I know you've had a very interesting journey uh, throughout school and then to where you're at now. So tell everybody a little bit about, you know, you grew up here in Brevard. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about you and uh, what you do for a living these days and how you kind of work yourself there. Well, um... It's I a lot to, of things. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> no pressure. Start. Uh, well, I've lived in Port St. John my whole life, and as you know. Um, and I went to the University of Central Florida and went for, um, I didn't know what I wanted to go for. I was really just lost, and I think every college kid is. So I kind of just picked whatever I've been doing for the past 15 years. I've had a camera. I've, I've done all the TV clubs. So I went to, um, I did uh, radio and television at UCF. And um, yeah, I did the program there. Graduated in 20, oh my God, when did I graduate? 2021. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in the fall, or no, I'm sorry, in the fall of 2022. I don't know what year it is. Um, v valid. So yeah, graduated, yeah. did that, and um, got an amazing internship opportunity while I was there. And um, that led me to my job now. Uh, I'm working in LA right now. And I work for the TV show Shark Tank um, as a post coordinator, but um, yeah. What um, was what was this internship that you that you won? Because I we were using the term prestigious because I think that I, I think that qualifies. That. <laughs> I think it qualifies. <laughs> that's that's nice. But um, <laughs> um, well, it was uh, whenever they advertised the program, they're like they like listed like four internships, and they're like Shark Tank is the one you want to get. This is the one. So I worked on I worked on my demo reel I worked on my resume I was doing clubs I was like this is I'm gonna get this and um I actually applied way too early and I was like <laughs> I'm not gonna get it I won't get the first one I'll just apply early and then apply the following year because they always recommend applying twice um because there's so little applicants that get picked but then I got picked the first round so I was like I'm a sophomore moving to LA uh sophomore in college which doesn't sound I guess I sound old but no I that was sounds scared. overwhelming I was very overwhelmed <laughs> so but um 
Basically, there's four positions that you're applying for. You're going for our office production assistant, um, our post production assistant, casting, and then our transcribers, which are typically remote, so they stay here in Florida and transcribe the show. Um, but I wanted to go to LA. I'm like, I want to go to LA. I, I've always wanted to go there. I just see everything, see all the studios. Um, so I got the office PA position after like, I think it was like four rounds of interviews with the executives, um, with the team, with, uh, other PAs. It was a lot of rounds of interviewing and, um, yeah, we just hit it off and he really liked my story and, um, He loved my senior project, which kind of got me the job. Um, What was that senior project? Should I keep going? I feel like no. This is is great. You're doing you're doing wonderful. Um, I just uh, what did I do for my senior? Well, Edgewood. I went to Edgewood Junior Senior High School, and the big deal is the um, the senior project at the end of the year. You work the entire year on it, and it's they put a lot of pressure on it, and you spend just hours and hours doing this uh, ten page research paper a project that benefits the community and then you have like a certain amount of hours you have to log and it's just like a lot it's prepping you for college basically um never did that in college by the way um but um, it's it's prepping you for something greater than college yeah but it did help me in the long run so i'm grateful but um every year at graduation we would see the same kind of um same kind of video that was just showing the same like 10 students it's same faces all the popular kids who just like which is great you know you see them all the time but then the other clubs that were left out were like i don't know like the band kids the theater kids the 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 kids that i was they were always left out so i was like my goal is to make sure all 132 students are in this video so i made sure every face appeared twice in the video so or at least once but i think everyone made it twice was what it was awesome so everyone made it in and then he just he really loved like the the producer of um shark tank just loved that he was like that is like the coolest thing and i was like very proud of it and yeah it got me the job so really great you were talking about those interviews out Mm -hmm. there with those guys and you said it's six rounds of interviews um i think it and i think it was like four or five yeah something like what were those like so imagine imagine scared now i was so (laughs) scared then it was the scariest thing ever imagine you know you're you're talking somebody else through it who maybe is fixing to go go through the interview process. Mm-hmm. What what were some things you maybe they asked you about that you weren't expecting, uh, uh, or or some things that you felt super comfortable with? Hmm. Well, they always just like they always started with like when did it start? When did that passion? When did you notice um, it started? So they really loved that I had started from a young age. I guess you don't have to do that, but they were just like, man, you've been doing this since you were since you've known you wanted to. Um, that was a big deal. I think another part of it was, um, projects are a big deal. Uh, if you're involved in a lot of filming projects, um, we had a lot of, uh, films going on at UCF that you could be a part of. You can just, you would advertise it online and then be like, Hey, we need understudies. We need background. We need camera people, just like anybody. So I think that like doing, being a part of those really helps too. Cause I was like taking an initiative to go out there and be a part of a film, even though I was getting paid or anything, it was just for fun. It was just something I wanted to do. So you've now worked that internship into uh, a job with yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. I got very fortunate because that doesn't happen for everyone out there. Um, sometimes they'll just be like, "Okay, that was fun. <laughs> See you later." <laughs> and you're like, help. "What? Do, what do I do?" So I kind of was, I was being annoying, and I just was like talking to everyone. I'm like, "I'm not leaving." Uh, <laughs> and I did. I bugged every department, and that's how I got into post and. Um, it carried me to other shows. Um, that's really, I think that's the game. Like I'm still learning it, but you have to make sure everyone knows who you are and what you want to do. That's the biggest thing. Like, what do you want to do? Right. So if something comes up, they They're think like, of you. Oh, hey, Haley right. mentioned that. Yeah. yeah that's kind of, so I try to make it known. Um, maybe I made it a little too known cause I, yeah, I never <laughs> left. So I don't know. But I think that's such a valuable thing for young people that might be listening to this who want to explore that as a profession, Mm -hmm. to know that internships and volunteering and ways that you can get connected and meet people is so valuable. Yeah, it it really is. Experience to put on a resume doesn't have to be paid experience. Just oh, anything. especially in the television industry. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah a, I'm aware. there's a lot of, yeah, d- doing PA stuff and coming yeah. in and just proving to them that you can 
show up, yep. show up on time. Yep. Because there are a lot of people that don't. Yeah. As someone in the nonprofit business, it's <laughs> the same. That. That's how I got my job. I started as a volunteer. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't leave. I kept annoying them. Yep. Every time there was a position open that I was not qualified for, yep. I was there. <laughs> and eventually I wore them down. Yep. Yep. I tell, you know, a lot of kids that, that I'm mentoring, you know, the best thing you can do is if you work, if you're in a room of individuals that you know you want to start working with, walk around and talk to each one of them about what they do and how they got to what they're doing. Let them open up to you and just have a conversation that's all about them. Like if you want to make, make sure they know your name when you introduce yourself to them and just let them talk. Yeah. Just let them tell her. And it's, there's no better marketing of yourself than just being interested in what other people are doing. Mm-hmm. So it's a beautiful it's thing. True. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. Well, the whole way I got into the TV business was mm-hmm. I, was a, I was a tour bus driver for a band. Oh, wow. What and band? Nobody that you would know. <laughs> okay. I, would tell you, I will tell you who it is, but you won't know. Maybe I will. Uh, no, it's, it was a, a Franciscan monk named John Michael Talbot. Yeah, I've heard of that. And he's, yeah. he's still <laughs> around, and he's still okay. doing Listen stuff. to him all the time. But <laughs> he and his brother, you can find him on iTunes, uh, okay. he and his brother uh, this were on now. this tour. <laughs> and uh, what I did is I hung out with like the lighting guy. I mm-hmm. said, what are you doing? How are yep. you doing this? Show me. And he was happy. He let me run the lights for a show. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, uh, you know, the audio guy, same thing. Mm-hmm. Show me how to do this. And, and so they love that kind of stuff. They do. And, yeah. and so it gave me knowledge. And then I was able to, when I got into teaching, I was able to say, I'll, I'll do TV production because mm-hmm. I know how to hook this yeah. stuff up. I don't yeah. know how that works. So <laughs> that got me there. Awesome. Imagine, you know, you're talking to some high school students and they know they have a passion they're pretty sure they want to go into the world you're in right now. Mm-hmm. What are some, what's some advice you would give to them or like high school version of you? Mm. You know, s- seeing where you've been now and that journey you've been mm-hmm. on, what's some, what's some uh, advice you might hand over to them? I guess uh, I feel like that this industry um, that I'm working in is very intimidating and nobody wants to go into it because it's not, <laughs> we're aware it doesn't pay very well at first. Um, a lot of hard hours. I've worked, I've never worked so hard. I've worked crazy hours out there um very demanding job so it's kind of intimidating but i would say i should have um maybe not doubted that i wanted to do it because i've always wanted to do it i know i did but i was like no i need to go to school and become something else that's going to pay better i guess so i feel like if you're passionate about it and you really want to do it it's going to work out somehow you'll make it work out just just go for it because i really did going to college I almost made a career switch like last minute because I was like I don't want to do it and I was like you know what I've always liked this I know I like it I'm going to do what I know I like and go for it so can you tell us a little bit about your role now that you're in I know you said you're in post now is that right yes Uh, I'm a post coordinator I started off as um, an office PA so I was working in the office on set and then um, our post coordinator left and I was like uh do you guys need somebody here and i am I'm, I'm here and i had worked with post before i i um worked as a post pa on so you think you can dance as well so that got me they were like oh you know post you've done it before so come on in so coordinator is already a step up from pa um P- pa rate kinda sucks <laughs> hours suck so i was excited just to move up and have a better title and like very fast i moved up pretty fast only after like two seasons of doing it so um But as a coordinator, I'm just kind of working with our editing team, um, our executive producers, and we're just making sure the episodes go out smoothly is our big job. So, yeah. Very cool. All right, let's get into the details. What is filming an episode of Shark Tank Light? What, what, you know, so I've watched, I start, I've actually started maybe two or three years ago. I started back at episode one, season one. Really? And I'm, I've been watching them all the way through. I, I, I watch it lot. probably two. Epi- <laughs> yeah. I watch yeah. probably two or three episodes a week. Really? Where, yeah, like I'll sit down at dinner and I'll watch. I'll watch one, mm-hmm. and I've been, you know, just I'm right now. I'm in the middle of uh, one of the COVID seasons, okay, and kind of going through all that. So I'm, I'm twelve or yeah, season eleven yeah, and twelve. Yeah, or, indeed. Yeah, yeah. I'm catching. I'm catching up. Mm-hmm. I'm getting there. What is it like being on set when that's being filmed? Like what, what's happening that maybe we well, wouldn't are know you about? on set? I, yeah, I well for office PA I was on set and as coordinator I go on set but not as much. Um, we have VTR days, so we have 
two months videotape record days. Oh, okay. And sorry. <laughs> I was like, what just happened? Okay. <laughs> videotape record days. So we have a month and then a gap and then another month of filming. So we'll do, it's really just a week during that month, but we're doing so much prep for that week. We have all of our um, lighting team come out. We have the stage setters. Everyone comes out, get it all ready for that week. Maybe a week and a half sometimes. It goes into the next week. But we'll have about six or seven days in each month of filming. So we'll do one day. We'll finish like, I think average was like six pitches, which everyone's very excited, like freaked out to hear because they're like, Oh, they're like 10 minutes, but it takes maybe an hour and a half to film each pitch. So we're doing like an eight hour, nine hour film day usually. Um, So we'll let them talk, let the entrepreneurs come out and talk, do their thing. Um, And yeah, we'll do like six pitches, do that. So in all, we're filming like, I think closer to, I think we get up to like 50 or 60 entrepreneurs and some of them don't make it on the show some of them do you don't really know until it airs unfortunately but huh. yeah i always wondered about that I, yeah I, so even yeah. you don't know no well kind of we have a little bit of a head start but we really don't know until wow. we're making the episode so i'll sit with our um assist, assistant editors and editors and if one of our executives just like this pitch isn't working or i didn't really feel that it just won't go in so it just depends on what they like and what yeah, works. Am I right in saying that uh, the I mentioned the sharks probably have a uh, a say in which episodes go on too, right? Uh, I, you know, I really don't know, but they definitely so if I they th- say something and they're like, I don't want that in or something, <laughs> or if they're like, oh yeah, ah, don't say that, maybe then they can definitely like, you know, have that taken out. But put the kibosh on it. It just depends. Yes. They definitely have a lot of input in what we do. So. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it is a show about them. Yeah. It, the, it, the yeah you, you would, guys. So. You would hope so. <laughs> What's some of the more interesting things you've seen happen on set? Um, oh, my gosh. That's a hard question. <laughs> I dig deep. Um, <laughs> I mean, no lights ever fell, fell anybody or anything, did no. they? <laughs> but we, not, not that she'd be allowed to tell us right, about. I'm just joking around. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure something. there's an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, we did have a shortage and it just cut in the middle of a pitch. No. And we were like, and they had already gone halfway through the pitch. So they just had to restart and it was the most awkward. I felt so bad because you really rev yourself up. You get in there, you... We, uh, the doors open, we all yell small doors at the same time. And those doors open, we go small doors and they all open and you get out there and it's scary. Like it is like the lights are all in your face Oh yeah. and you have to sit there for like three minutes before you can say anything. You have to stare at them because that is my worst nightmare. That is standing there. I sharks and it's the scary. I would drop dead. I know. Oh no. I can't do it. I had to do it just because they needed a stand-in, oh. and I almost passed out. I was standing there. I'm like, I, like right now, I'm a little nervous, but like I was red. Like I was three like, minutes of I silent eye contact. Do it. No, I could not do it. Yep. Uh, you could make that probably as weird as you wanted to. <laughs> it was, yeah. You could. They'll sometimes dance. They'll like alleviate the stress, but like it is like, yeah, we got to get the right lighting angle. Make sure all angles. There's so many cameras. We have the full of cameras, so it's nerve-wracking. So. I don't wow! Know. <laughs> yeah. So can you can you imagine? You, I'm sure you can probably imagine this a lot better than Cindy and I can in your head. What she's describing going on, and you know, since it's it's, oh, you know, yeah. it's your world. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah you got it. Yep. Yeah. That's uh wow. I, I I don't even. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, yeah. I just when watching the episodes, you can you see these you know you see these things and these pitches. Mm-hmm. And you wonder after the people leave, like the people that don't get what they what they were looking for, like are people like like super in duress, or do they just do they just kind of walk off and have a couple of glasses of whiskey and forget about the whole thing, or what? <laughs> well, that's the whole. So you walk off stage. We have our post interviews. Um, so they're standing behind, or they're standing in front of a curtain, and they're in a separate kind of room. And we kind of interview them and be like, so how do you, how do you feel? What, like, oh. what happened out there? And they just have to, sometimes they're crying. Sometimes, I say sometimes, they're sometimes, that, sometimes that's sometimes shown. Not, yeah. yeah, sometimes they show it. Sometimes we'll cut it out. And then it, the awkward thing is you have to get on a golf cart, go to the next sound stage. So you have to sit there with whatever happened on stage and then go do another interview <gasps> in another room like 20 minutes not 20 minutes later but some time later so it's just like you got to keep doing it and I you get time have, to think about it and yes, kind of run reflect. it over your head a thousand times so maybe it's better maybe it's not but it that would make me nervous just having to sit there and wait mm-hmm. for another interview if it didn't go well or 
Yeah. Sometimes. Say if it did, I guess you'd be super happy about it. Then you yeah. go, man, what percentage did I give up? Was that a good idea or a bad <laughs> idea? Dag nabbit. Can't go back now. <laughs> They own 40% of my business. No, just <laughs> <laughs> things, that, things that run through my head sometimes. So on a serious note, um, mm-hmm. I know over the past while here, you've went through some pretty serious health stuff and you've been battling, you know, you've been battling and have successfully defeated all this stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I was, whenever I first got to LA about three years ago, I noticed like a lump in my throat and I was like, oh, everyone has that, right? And I would... No, you don't. So if you have a lump in your throat, maybe get that checked out. Um, preface all this. Um, so I, it, I had, uh, it was like a year later, it started to grow in size like crazy and it was like, noticeable. So whenever I turned to the side, you would see it. And I was like, oh, that's not, that's not good. So they, um, what happened after that? Um, it's a while ago. I just, I went to the doctors and they were like, yeah, you have a, uh, it's called a goiter. And it's just like a, mass of something it's don't worry about it is what they said so it's like oh great and they're like it's cosmetic do you want it removed i'm like it's really bugging me and i don't like how it looks and it catches on my shirt i yeah. hate it yeah. and um they're like okay we'll get it removed like they were like this is a cosmetic procedure it's fine and then i go into it and um they're trying to run it they're like we're gonna run it just see what it is and nothing came up and they're like that's not good so they sent it to a cancer research center and it came back and I had um, stage four follicular, oh, I can't talk, um, thyroid cancer, which I was like, oh my gosh, that's not what I was expecting at all. And I don't know, to hear the C word, you're just like, especially oh. as young as you are. Yeah. I was just already, I was away from my family. I was stressed out. I was just working a lot. It was just a lot. So that probably didn't help either. So no. that was removed. But then they're like, that means they only removed one side. So we got to go back in now. And I was like, I just had this done. And so they, they uh, went back in. So having the same thing done, that was a nasty surgery. I just hated that. Like you can see the scar, but um, it was definitely manageable. Like I didn't have the worst kind of cancer because the survival rate is very high. I got very lucky. Um, but just to know you have cancer and that it could spread, they were worried about it, like spreading to the lungs and lymph nodes in your body. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, this is scary. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. And, um, then I came back home. Um, I, uh, came back home and I did, um, this radiation treatment, um, which was just like a, a little capsule that you ingest and you're radi- you're literally radiating for days and you can't be around anyone cause you'll like infect it's it yeah, wasn't that right, bad right it's really not that bad. people most exactly <laughs> now you're so isolated. you're like i gotta sit in my room but i just got to watch shows and stuff I just sat in my room and you have to this is a weird thing but you have to suck on sour candy during it because it dries up your um <gasps> oh. your whatever your salivary but, yes thank you mm-hmm. dries those up like crazy which i'm dealing with now it sucks but so I will never eat a warhead again. That is the nastiest <laughs> thing. Like whenever I see one, I'm now like, it's forever oh, associated no, with the I'm, worst yes, part of your life. Yes, I hate sour candy. We'll only eat it now. And you just had to suck on it for days and days, which sounds fun to some people, but I hate <laughs> sour candy. So yeah, every now and, and then it's maybe not a bad idea, but yeah, having to do it nonstop it was, would be terrible. Yeah, like five days of doing it was like I can't, my mouth hates me right now. But no, it was like I think um, I. It wasn't, it was treatable. It was a long process, like a lot of surgeries and the radiation and just, um, I'm still doing blood work every three months and I'm on medication and I'm fine now, but it was just like a, that was a long year just of test and poked and it's, it sucks. It is, it really, truly sucks. So, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I know me and myself and my, your family, and there's so many people that are I've been praying for you and uh, looking out for you for all that. And man, it is, I, I'm just so proud of the young woman you are and what you know, all the things you've accomplished and where you're at. It gets me all teary eyed just starting to talk about it. So no. I got to kind of stop. But um, <laughs> I, I just, I couldn't be more proud of you and the, the wonderful, that. the wonderful young lady you are. Thank you. Um, so I asked you to bring some homework. Oh, man. Yeah. Let's jump into the homework. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. I got to pull it together. No, why? I'm fine. I'm <laughs> sitting here. I'm good. No, I'm saying I got to pull it together. Yeah, it's okay. It's no, like, I mean, I'm good. I'm, everything's good. We're I know. Nothing to be it's sad just, about. Oh, it's not sad. It's just an emotionally happy kind of thing. Okay. I, uh, I shed happy tears all the time. And I've, it's funny. The whole time I've been sitting here, 
I've been watching this lizard run back and forth up the camera. I was wondering oh, what you were I just keep, I keep chuckling. He sees on the left side of the camera, on the middle camera. Uh, he's, he's running down where the yes. wires are at now. And I've been sit, I was sitting here. I was like, I'm trying to be distracted, but he's like running up. And he'd run across, like he'd almost go to run across the front of the camera and he'd run back down. Oh, I see him. <laughs> oh, weird. We're, we're recording and Frank has to try to not be distracted by a lizard. Mm, What's funny. that like? <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Oh, it's a story from their time. Um, <laughs> I did an interview one time with a lizard that I found, uh, a chameleon that I found on the way here. And I had him on my head like the entire yeah. episode. And Cindy Didn't noticed tell it. us. He Cindy. said nothing. It was like what? burrowed into his bun. Halfway his through the bun. interview, yeah, it couldn't came find out. Anything in that, well, he's, so. like, he's, and it's just looking at <laughs> yeah, me. He's oh. just crawling up a little bit. And oh our God. poor guest was saying something very deep and heartfelt. And I'm like, don't <laughs> react. Don't. Do not freak out. Do not. Well, I oh honestly, I thought he was, he was he was kind of back here. And then he kind of just kept crawling. And I, as he was doing it, I'm like. And Frank's uh -oh, like shaking his head at me like, don't lose it. Don't lose it. I see Cindy going. And I keep and going, going, I keep looking at Cindy and going, the look of the guy, the guy's talking. I'm like, Cindy, don't, don't, don't say don't, it. Don't, don't and don't she finally it. goes, is that a lizard on your head? <laughs> it's a you know, big chameleon. So it's, I don't know. Pretty <laughs> it was, funny. Yeah. Wow. Lizard is not the right word. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice. yeah. Just a lizard on steroids. What was his name? I don't think he had a name. He have a name? It was actually <laughs> she, but yeah. She. Yeah. Good times. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So do you have a topic for your trivia? I do. Or is it all over the place? No, it's, well, it's pretty general. It's just um, history of Sony since I we work on the Sony. Very lot. cool. Oh, um, okay. I think it's pretty interesting. This I, is right up Bill's I get alley. In, yes. Yeah, you might enjoy <laughs> I will do I don't, know, I don't know a lot about Sony. I, I don't think so. Do you have a studio you do like? Uh, no, not really. I'm you don't not have a favorite particular. studio, Bill? No? no. I don't have a particular uh, favorite studio. No. Oh, okay. I have a, I'm kind I of biased. I couldn't name more than like three of them, I don't think. I don't well, think let's name see. three. Yeah. Uh, no, just kidding. No, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'm pretty right, sure Frank. I could name three. <laughs> let's see how we do. I can't. <laughs> oh no. Well, I mean, uh, I see them when the movies come up. So anyhow. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, let's. Uh. I'll give a little backstory for this first one. So back in 1938, The Wizard of Oz was filmed at Sony Pictures Studios. At the time, it was MGM Studios before we bought them out. Um. This particular movie was known for having awful working conditions, and it really put their cast and crew through the worst. Uh, this is a pretty well-known thing when we're working on set. Everyone, when they give you a tour of the lot, they bring this up because it was just like, has the craziest stories like of what went on on set. Really? Like actually, yes. Um, I've, I've heard things. Yes. Like, yeah. like this is the movie. This is the one where they were put through some stuff. So um, first question. Um, in the scene when Glenda the Good Witch introduces snow to the poppy field, um, this is when Dorothy is waking up from a deep sleep. What material was used to portray the snow? I do have a bunch of answers you can choose oh, from, I know. but I kind of want to just hear you. Wasn't it asbestos-based? Yeah. No, it wasn't based. It, it, it was. was. It literally asbestos. was. Yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. oh yes. From the, there, oh, I've we, heard horrific yes. things You don't about understand the filming in mm -hmm. films and stuff, because <gasps> the lights are so hot, mm -hmm. they, used to, they used asbestos blankets. Yep. Um, Asbestos every inside the lighting cans. There was asbestos. Asbestos mm -hmm. was everywhere. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> oh, give goodness you. gracious. Yeah, I I said bubbles, asbestos, or wood shavings. So maybe you could have <laughs> guessed which one it was. But um. See, I was going something sipping like cotton or something. I didn't expect asbestos. I know. Yeah. I no, they went stay. Well, you know, you don't want to have an accidental fire. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, we'll kill everybody some other way. Yeah, it's fine. Later on. Yeah, later, later, that's later on. Later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem for a later day. They all smoked in those days anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. true. <laughs> well, let's make it out of asbestos or somebody will set the set on fire with their cigarettes. Yeah. Well, see, asbestos, the problem with asbestos is breathing it. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. particles. I would say they were worried about somebody taking their cigarette and throwing it into the cotton the sheets witch. and then just like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the witch. There you go. <laughs> okay, that's, well, that was a good one. Okay. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, a little dark, but interesting. <laughs> um, this is also Wizard of Oz based. I have two of those. Um, so during the filming of The Wizard of Oz, 124 people were hired to portray the munchkins. Um, so where did MGM keep all the munchkins? Because you put all your actors in hotels, you know, local. So we have this um, hotel right across the way. It's called the Culver City. Uh, is it the Culver? Just Culver City Hotel. Uh, you can walk to it. It's a very his historic place. Um, 
So there's about 46 rooms in the hotel. This isn't really a question. This is kind of just a fun fact because I didn't know how to form <laughs> uh, it as a question. No, it's good, yeah. Um, so there's only 46 rooms, and I said there's 124 munchkins. They placed three munchkins in each bed sideways in each Come room. On. And that's how they kept them there to budget, like to... Like, oh, isn't that and insane? I heard stories. They had some parties. Oh, they did. Yeah, they that had was a big some deal. munchkin parties. Yes, really. Oh, Actually, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was old Hollywood was yes. known for parties. Yes. Well, they I came, mean, not like Hollywood uh, isn't now, but <laughs> a lot of munchkins were hung over. Yes, that was. Yeah, that's just like when you go into. I've stayed there once, and they always give you a little tour. So that's the fun fact they give uh-huh. you, and I oh, wow. always enjoyed that. I don't know. I thought that was weird, though. Goodness gracious. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's nuts. Um, So then, this is a question. Um, Sony has displayed props and memorabilia all over the lot from all sorts of movies and television shows collected over the years. Just all over. Um, Which iconic picture car is parked on the Sony lot? And I do have three options if you guys want to choose from them or just try to guess. Let's figure this out real quick. Okay. Iconic picture car. So uh, that means iconic car that was in a movie exactly or show so oh okay with I got, with i know what, what it's not okay go okay ahead. what well, is it's it not the batmobile you're right <laughs> no yeah and it's not yeah i i think about the things i've seen at ideas. universal studios mm-hmm. but um because sony is columbia mm-hmm. so columbia pictures so not ghostbusters because that's universal right well, yeah i believe so i don't know it might no, not ghostbusters be. is universal it is. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, did you, oh. you got that though that Yay. is, yeah. is it, really? <laughs> it is this we have the uh well wow. i'll let you guys guess I'll let you guys guess. <laughs> oh so that that it is, is one of the ones there yes okay. so but the original 1959 cadillac the ecto-1 is there like the original one which that's is really okay. cool awesome. so i thought you would find that interesting that is interesting oh, yeah because yeah. wow of, uh, yeah okay that's it. That was good, good job, Cindy. Well, there's Thank you. a couple more. Oh, there's a couple uh, yeah. more. Yeah. If you want to try to guess. Oh, there's other cars. There's there? two. Well, we have like twelve, but I only listed. Oh, there's uh, that. Uh, uh, what was the the truck from the Beverly Hillbillies? No. Dag um, <laughs> I was so excited about that for a second. Bonnie and Clyde car. No. 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 Okay. I, I didn't. Know the Vanishing was... Point. Vanishing Point. No. What about the car from Knight Rider? No. That's a Universal. Oh, yeah. That was, <laughs> that's, a, that's a dang good guess, though. <laughs> that, that would they be have cool. that at Universal. The A Team van. That's at Universal no. too, because hmm. I, I they had it rigged. I I could you could pick it up. Yeah, really? Oh yeah, because it yeah. I could tell you if you want. <laughs> yeah, I tell us. Yeah, okay. tell us. Um, my favorite is the RV in the Pontiac um, Aztec from Breaking Bad. They're both there. the actual ones. Oh okay. They have the bullet holes in the RV. They have wow. the dust on the car still, like inside. Like it's pretty. It's cool. I remember so. you and your you and your family talking to me about that show, but I've never seen it. No, never it's seen a single good. episode of it. Yeah, it's I a really, good show. it's filmed well too. It's very, it's a good show. Yeah, yeah. And then the last one is um, Ricky Bobby's Wonder Bread race car, the actual <laughs> one. Oh, uh, okay. It's there. I don't know. I just always. It's that's like funny. it's where we eat lunch. So you're <laughs> just sitting cool. next to these cars, and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. They're the real ones. That's there you cool. Go. That's funny. So, um, and then I have another. Do I keep going? With Please. Questions? Yeah. Yep. Okay. How many more you got? I we, have, we get very competitive. You said five. Um, yeah, yeah. So you got I two more? Two more. Yes. Sweet. Okay, hit us with them. Um, okay. Uh, one of Sony Picture Studios' largest stages, stage 30, covers 31,000 square feet and reaches 50 feet high. It's huge. Like, it's insane. Um, inside the stage is a large water tank, well known for providing the water settings for classic movies from Esther Williams in the 1930s. Um, there's a scene of the dark Knight that was filmed there. And, uh, the movie Castaway was also filmed a lot in that. Um, how many gallons of water does this tank hold? You think just throw something out there. Let's see. It's, uh, thir- you said 31,000 square feet. Well, the stage is 31,000 square feet. It takes up most of it and it's 50 feet high. It's a crazy number. So I don't, I don't know. You can... So is it in cubic feet or is it in gallons? Gallons. Gallons. Okay. I'm going to say 1.2 million gallons. I was going to say 2 million. Oh, maybe. What do you think, Bill? <laughs> lower, lower than that. <laughs> 50,000. Yeah, we uh, overestimated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the multi-level tank's deepest depth is 30 feet and takes four days to fill this 721,400-gallon wow. tank. Okay. Which is crazy just to I go I don't even have that. a concept of how I big that is. I didn't either until I saw it. I was like, oh, my. Like, okay. how big's a pool? <laughs> It's just way big, well, way smaller than that. But it's uh, cool. crazy to see it when you go in there. It just keeps going and going. Wow. And it's very cool. That's so, crazy. Yeah. 
So you said you got one more? I do have one more. All right, hit us with boring, the one. Hit us with... <laughs> it's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. But it is about my job, so... Well, uh, just cool. keep in mind, Frank's over, so <laughs> yeah. we're good. Well, there's nothing new wow. behind that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because people always do alligator questions. They, people always throw you softballs. Mm-hmm. Oh, should I have done you that? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Okay. no you're better Don't off help good. him. No, yeah. They're not really questions. It's I think not, I was just kind of giving you facts, too. I feel bad. It's not but. fair whenever people ask the, the, the high-end crocodilian questions. Mm-hmm. And expect Bill and Cindy to get that. Right. I kind of, I kind of feel bad because I'm like, well, I know what that is, but I'd really have you guys guess it. Right. Um, As the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but it's still. I mean, it's like that'd be like. Uh, I'm trying to think of something to compare it to. Be like people asking you. College basketball questions. Which me and Cindy would go, I don't freaking have any clue. It's what conference? I don't even know if it was a Excuse thing. Excuse me. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy, you know all about it. I do, yes. Uh, well, you, I'm, and I'm trying to... I just don't want to make you look know. bad. Yes. <laughs> and yes. Any, any other subject that Cindy would know more than me Frank, and Bill about, so... Frank's underestimating you again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Anyhow, sorry. That's go right okay. ahead. Um, what is the most successful company to come out of Shark Tank? And I do have some, Ooh. if you want to pick or just throw them at me. I, I, my guess would be Scrub Daddy. Oh, that's a good guess. I I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 oh, let's see I, what other what other good ones. Uh, the Lobster Place was actually I think pretty good. Which that is, place is really good. Yeah, they, they're they're pretty successful, but I think Scrub Daddy is one of the top ones. Okay. What do you think? I don't know. That's the one everybody I mean still talks about to the, the day. One, yeah, that I, which I thought it was, but you're wrong. It's actually. Bombas. I don't know if you've really heard of that. the yeah. sock company. The sock company. So they they actually did oh. a wrap gift this year. They gave us all really nice socks and stuff with like wow. our logos and. But yeah, they had 1.3 billion dollars in retail sales like up to date since wow. coming on Shark Tank, which was like. But Scrub Daddy had 926 million, so they're very close. They're say, third. Doesn't so. Bombas donate a pair of socks to somewhere every time a pair yes. is sold? They do. Or something yeah. like we that. get them a lot at yeah. work. Do you? Oh, nice. Yes. That's yeah. awesome. I like them. They're cool pair they came in um i think it was last season to say hi so people yeah. want to get behind things like that it yeah. makes it makes sense why something of that nature would succeed because that's the thing mm-hmm. everybody wants to get behind it's true and then the squatty potty at <laughs> uh, 20 or or 260 million so people want to get well. behind that too <laughs> yeah. yeah there you go <laughs> so yeah that was it Ta-da. <laughs> Haley, thank you so much for being here with us and chatting with us thanks and for having me again i'm so so proud of you thank, thank you. you appreciate it all right, y'all. Another uh, episode in the book. Yes, is it, sir. Is it a book? It's on the interweb somewhere. It's there, yeah. Yeah, it's on there somewhere. I hope you guys have a, a wonderful afternoon until about five minutes from now when we finish up one more episode. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in to the Ears Podcast, filmed here at Titusville High School and Terrier TV. Thank you to Edna Wilson with Celebrate Remax Aerospace for sponsoring our program. And we will catch y'all next week or in a few minutes. Bye bye. <laughs>